Hey everyone, Dado Dad here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make your own parallel guides for your track saw for hundreds less than you can buy them for. They're super accurate, super easy to make, and they don't require any welding or 3D printing. Let's check them out. Now, there are a lot of really great commercially available parallel guides out there. I, for one, was interested in the ones from TSO, mainly because I have their rail square and I absolutely love this thing. They didn't pay me to say that, and I bought this with my own money, but I'm just a really big fan. Unfortunately, their parallel guides are always sold out online, so I had to make my own. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this thing. It was really easy to make, and it's dead accurate. Now, TSO or anyone else, if you want to send me a set of your parallel guides, I'd love to put my DIY build up against yours in a head-to-head -head competition someday, maybe in another video. I promise I'd give it a fair shake. So I got these flip stops on Amazon. Uh, you can see that they have a little micro adjustment feature here, as well as the flip stops, and then they fit standard T-Track on the back. And you'll need some double T-Track. This is also available on Amazon. Uh, you can see that it comes with a deeper track and a shallow track. The shallow track being for the ruler and the deeper track being for your flip stops. We're also gonna need a way to mount our parallel guides to our rail. And for that, I just picked up some of these T-plates from my local hardware store. Uh, you can see that they have uh, five holes in them. Uh, the two on the edges and the two at the bottom are actually perfectly perpendicular to each other. Uh, the middle one uh, is a little bit off-centered, but it's not going to be used anyway. Now, these are made for wood screws, but the holes are actually the perfect diameter for quarter 20 bolts. Now, I have the Makita track saw, and the nice thing about this is that this double T track is actually the same height as my Makita rail, so all I have to do is mount this T directly on top. Now you can use T-bolts, but I like to use carriage bolts and then just simply grind the edges down until they fit into the track. So grind two faces of the bolt flat so that it barely slides into the track. Now I like to grind my own instead of buying off the shelf T-bolts because of this extra square lip here, which we're gonna use to keep it centered inside the track. So we need some kind of friction between the T-bolts that slide into the track and the underside of the track. Otherwise, the parallel guides are gonna slide back and forth. Now I've thought of all kinds of different ideas using rubber washers and trimming them down and uh, nothing seemed to really work. So what I'm going with is just good old fashioned hot glue on the face of the bolt. So we're just gonna put a little glue here on the flat faces. Don't worry if it gets a little messy, you can uh, trim this off. While I do this, I have a favor to ask. If you like this video or this idea, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm new to YouTube and a sub would really help me so I can keep making more great content. I'd love if you could like this video too. Thanks. All right, so now we just trim off the extra hot glue. We're looking to make a nice, flat, even washer. Now these T-plates come pre-drilled with quarter inch holes, which are just fine for these two holes that'll go on the T-track, but I actually need 5 16 holes for the two that will be on my track saw track. So I'm going to drill those out just a hair bigger now. All right, time for some assembly. Got our 5 16 bolts inside the track saw track. Got the quarter inch bolts inside the T-track. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some washers on both of them just to have a little more clamping area. Um, have our T-plate. Now the T-track um, is gonna get some nylon stop nuts. And then I found these at my hardware store. Again, I'll list uh, a link to one down in the description. Uh, but want the track saw uh, pieces to still be adjustable. So we'll go ahead and uh, finish this up. The nice thing about these oversized uh, T-nuts is that even if they're 90 degrees to the track, I can still slide my track saw completely underneath them without any interference. Okay, lastly, we wanna make sure that this is uh, perfectly square to the track. 
Um, but I don't want my T-track to be rubbing on my track saw track. Um, if it's flush, it's going to end up scratching the inside surface of this track. So I want to give it a little bit of a gap uh, so it can slide freely, um, but still want to make sure everything is square. All right, now it's time to add the rulers. I like this product from Craig. Uh, they offer both a right to left and left to right reading tapes. Uh, be sure to get the one that reads right to left because that's the proper uh, direction for this project. Now I'm using a 48 inch piece of T-Track. So you'd think I could get by with a four foot piece of tape, uh, but that's not true because we're not measuring from the edge of the T-Track. We're actually measuring from the cutting edge of the track saw track. So you need to add a little extra length. I choose to use the 12 foot tapes and I'll show you why. My Makita track saw track is just over seven inches long. So with 48 inches of T-Track, I need the first 55 and a half or so inches of this tape to work. But I bought the 12 foot version, uh, which is 144 inches because down the line, I may want to make a shorter version of these parallel guides, perhaps with 24 inches of T-Track and I can reuse the tape. And let me show you how. So I cut this tape in half and I'm starting my measurement on my shorter guide at the 100 mark. I'm gonna ignore this leading one for the entire length of this piece. But if I start at 100 or zero, I still have 44 inches to play with. And again, with my seven inches of, of track width plus 24 inches of T-track, I still have enough tape to make a shorter version of this without buying a new tape. So that's just a quick, easy way to save a few dollars if you decide to make an additional parallel guide. Okay, now it's time to put the tape onto my T-Track. So we're gonna start off using a board of a known width. This is a piece of MDF that I have laying around. It happens to be exactly 24 and a half inches across. So I put my track saw track down, lining it up with the edge of the board. Be sure to trim the rubber. Uh, if this is your first time using a, a track saw piece, so you get to your final cut edge. That looks pretty good. And then line up your stop. There, perfect. I really like these stops. They're pretty cost effective and they have an adjustable measuring stop. But my one complaint would be is that it appears you have this entire distance of this slot to adjust from. But because the pin is set in the middle of the hole, you actually only have about half of that length uh, for your measuring adjustments. So when you're looking to, to center it, you actually need to be about a quarter of the way over because that's halfway between your full distance that this can be moved. All right, with my set screw a quarter of the way from the end, like we discussed, to put it in the middle of its actual adjustment range, I'm gonna line up my tape so that the point matches my board's width, which is 24 and a half inches. It's important to remember when setting this up to offset where the ruler is from the stock block. This board is 24 and a half inches wide, but 24 and a half inches doesn't line up with the edge of the board because of the distance between my measuring point and my stop block. All right, now I scored the paper backing on the underside of the adhesive, I'm making sure to not move this off of where it needs to be. I can start to press this down. Again, it would mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the channel and if you ring the little bell, that'll keep you up to date whenever I come up with new content as well. Thanks so much. Now that the back half is laid down, I'm going to move my stop block out of the way here and finish the front half. Okay, now that my tape is down, I want to come back and be sure to micro adjust this screw again because my tape was bowed uh, when I put it down, right? So I want to make sure that it's perfect. So again, just reline up your track saw with the edge. 
drop this to the end. Once you do this micro adjustment the first time, you shouldn't have to do it again. But every time you remove your parallel guides from your track saw track, just be sure to take a look at it and adjust as needed. And that's about it. That is how to make your own parallel guides. Thanks for watching today, and if you subscribe to the channel, keep an eye out for my next video.